of the major things is project confidence. If you don't know what anybody's talking about, just project. Like, you are a knowing person. You have confidence in yourself. Even if you don't quite understand what they're talking about, perhaps you can ask the pertinent questions so that you can figure it out. Perhaps you might need to go home and do some research on the web. Um, but it's really important that you don't just you know, say, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, and, and uh, not, not listen. Um, I talked to a, a young person at Lockheed Martin who was getting a master's degree recently, and she was a little overwhelmed because people started coming to her with expectations, like she should know this piece of information or that piece of information. And she was really overwhelmed because some people think, oh my god, no, I don't have any idea, and they just you know, don't think about it. But if you have a higher degree, part of what you're learning getting your higher degree is how to think, how to find pieces of information. Um, other people uh, haven't had that background, and they don't know what they're doing, and they don't know how to get this information. And when you find this information for them by going and searching on the internet, going to the library, they think you're working miracles. Um, but basically, from getting this degree, uh, you're just becoming a smart person. You're finding out where to get information, how to make computations if that's what's needed. And you're just basically, um, you know, showing that you can do the job, no matter what. Um, the, uh, the working miracles thing, I touched on a little bit. Some people think you're working miracles when you look things up. Uh, there's another aspect of it. I have a, a really good friend who actually works miracles all the time. This is basically when the customer says, um, I want you to come up with this solution. I'm only giving you X thousands of dollars and uh, two days and or you know a month, and I want you to come up with this really incredible solution. Well, sometimes you just got to do that. If, for example, an art of workshop, they don't give you hardly any money. Uh, they cut all the money after they've started the project. They expect you to do incredible things with very little money and no help. Um, and if you can do that, you can basically make yourself a career. Because once you have established that you can work miracles, whether it's getting thing, having to work hard for a little while so that you establish <coughs> that you're a competent, dependable person, then they're ready to give you money later. Um, and my friend is finding that out as we speak. So, um, there is an issue though if you want to do research. So I just I like to do research. That's I mean I'm an abstract mathematician, and the whole um, the way I got into this is I'm a smart person. I know how to look things up. I can figure things out. Um, I don't have a lot of background. I'm picking up a lot of background. Um, so customers, you know, I don't know the area as well as some, or I didn't. I've been in the area now like six years, so I picked up a lot. Um, but one thing I found when you want to do research, and when I was working for the government, is there are there's not a lot of research dollars. So how many of you are um, getting higher level degrees? One of you? Two of you? Oh, uh, <laughs> definition of higher level? Higher yeah. level being masters, or above. masters yeah. or above. OK. So how many of you think you want to do research? A couple. Well, OK. So that my, that's my whole point. Uh, and the rest of the, the talk will be what you have to do to be able to do research. Um, when I got into the government um, working for SPAWAR, I was in one of those rotational programs where you work 
three months on one project and then they switch you to another project for three months and then um, you kind of pick which group you want to be in. Um, and well, the first week I was there, this gentleman came up to me and started going on and on about how I had to bring in money. Um, now, in pure math, we don't. <laughs> we don't bring in money. We don't bring in money. We, you know, we rarely care about the practical aspects of what we're doing. We don't have to, you know. We basically teach and do research, and you know, that's about it. So I was a little uh, overwhelmed. So I'm not sure about um, how things work here, but if you get the option or the opportunity to make contacts with people through, um, through conferences, if you get the opportunity to assist with writing proposals, make sure you get some skills there. Uh, I was totally OBE. I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, who even is funding research? Well, the folks funding research are ARDA, DARPA, AFRL, um, base, HSARPA. HSARPA now, um, basically government NSF. agencies. DISA? NSF. NSF. We can get a little bit. Oh, we can get NSF money? Oh, nice. Well, learn something new every day. <laughs> so you need to know your customer. If you have a chance to meet these people, take it. I mean, you need to have contacts. You need, um, basically, you need to know how to get money. Um, and one thing is the customers tend to want immediate results these days. I don't know, it could be different in a little while, but right now they want immediate results. So, for example, in Lockheed Martin, there's some internal R&D money, but since the turnaround time is so short, the way to get around that is to say, oh, well, we can have interim deliverables. Um, we can do spiral development, things like that, which um, definitely is helpful. So here are my thoughts on convincing people to give you money, which it's taken me a long time to come up with these. Um, I know in computer science, you tend to write more papers, have more publications, um, write more research grants and things, which you don't do as much in pure math. So if you can get uh, into that, definitely do it. Um, make contacts, know your customer. You're going to write uh, some software or you're going to come up with a solution, a system solution for uh, AFRL. Learn as much as you can about the Air Force. Find somebody who works for the Air Force and get them on your team so that they can give you insights into what the needs are of your customer, um, what their environment is. Do they have you know, legacy systems that you need to be able to interact with? Um, what are their biases? Uh, the other thing is I've discovered that every year there is some pithy new phrase. So um, I'm sure you've all heard of defense in depth. That one's stuck around for a long time. This year it's power to the edge. So it's like the government's thinking they want their end user, the guy on the battlefield, to be able to wirelessly connect to some guy. I mean, he may be in, in Korea, and he's got to, you've got to go through a satellite, which is slow, and the, not, well, the bandwidth is uh, you know, not all that uh, reliable. Things could shut off at any minute, especially with wireless. Um, you know, there are a lot of issues. Oh, and, and we don't even want to talk about that. Uh, things could be classified. So somehow he has to be able to authenticate himself to this server way over here in the US from South Korea or North Korea or wherever he happens 